on CIUT 89.5 FM. On today's program, we have Bob Timmons. Bob is the artist for the ocean, and through his powerful awareness art, exposes stories of worldwide marine animal decline and abuse and critical issues of ocean health. He leads, organizes, and documents street demonstrations, marches, and grassroots protests, and through multimedia brings these events to a wider global audience. He is a fearless vocal advocate for animals everywhere. Bob also combines the arts and sciences in his advocacy. As an environmental sciences graduate, he integrates knowledge and passion in his paintings, writings, campaigns, and public outreach. And I have to say, Bob, you are one of the people that has really jumped on the uh, AR scene in Toronto in the last few years. And uh, I think all of us have been, frankly, have been <laughs> surprised and uh, taken off guard by the amount of energy and uh and enthusiasm that you bring to your work. So, Bob, thank you, and uh, welcome to the program. I wanted to start by just asking a bit about your background and uh, how you got involved with animal issues. Uh, you were mentioning to me before uh, before we came on the air that you kind of burst onto the scene, and, and some people were <laughs> like, where did this guy come from? And so where did you come from, and how did you get here? Well, yeah, that is a very good question, because a lot of people that I am network with worldwide as well as local uh, actually just know about me just showing up and uh, taking leadership uh, in certain areas and organizing a lot of things. Um, well, going back to about March of 2007, I uh, <clears throat> came down to, uh, to Toronto just to push my art. That was my main objective, to come to Toronto, to a big city, that uh, to be a part of an art community. And as I did so, um, I ended up seeing a movie called Shark Water uh, from a local producer here, Rob Stewart. And uh, that movie just totally uh, hit me deep and started some stuff moving. And uh, I was so inspired that I, I sent out an email to all the people I was friends with at that moment. Of course, we're not uh, animal rights people and, you know, thought of me as some, uh, you know, energetic lunatic, you know. Um, so, uh, I, you know, of course, I ignore all that stuff, I, as I do today. Uh, I just keep uh, focusing on my passion. I keep pushing forward. So along came uh, Scarborough Arts Council here in the uh, south side of Toronto. Uh, they put out a, a request for artists uh, in regards to the environment. Instantly I thought this was my window to paint for the sharks. Um, this was uh, a way that I felt I could put out a, a great message. So uh, I started painting. I finished the, the painting up in uh, January of 2008. And uh, I named this painting One Shark is Worth a Million. Now, of course, um, with uh, millions dying a year, I thought that was uh, the most appropriate name. So the best thing about this Scar uh, Scarborough Arts Council was that for the first time it was going to be put into uh, a Chinese embassy around Toronto here, and it was going to be around China Chinese New Year's. So I thought, wow, this is like great. If I get in here, being a juried uh, entrance, I thought uh, it was going to hit all the, the right the right people that I wanted to expose this to. Unfortunately, I was denied, and uh, you know the painting did not make it to this uh, exhibit. But uh, of course, I didn't stop there. I uh, you know went around that wall and uh, decided to start networking. Um, a gentleman named Duncan has a stopsharkfinning.com, I believe. Uh, well, he posted it on his uh, website under his news, and right there, I'm like, wow, you know what? It's time to use the internet here. It's time to uh, start networking and getting this out. So I started doing that. And as I was doing that, I was learning about a lot of people that were doing it. And I started to grab onto those people and start networking with those people. And, uh, and they're, they're such the most compassionate people out there. It's, uh, sadly, it's only 10% of the population of the world, which is the population that's alive. You know, 90% of this population on this planet is actually just surviving in my eyes now that I've you know jumped over and uh, so as I was uh, doing that and pushing the information on the sharks I uh, started following the Sea Shepherd and uh, they at that moment um, were heading down to the Antarctic to uh, protect the whales a thousand whales that the Japanese want to kill every year in, in uh, under the name of research which is outrageous to me and uh, before I can do any painting I had to do research on it so you know I I have to develop on what I have to expose and how to get the story out. So I ended up doing a painting on the whales uh, to put that story out because I thought that was something much needed. 
So it, it's not that uh, I was aiming to be a part of the ocean per se. It was just this is how it, it comfortably flowed, and I just allow it to go the way it goes. And uh, so I continued on, and um, I followed the Sea Shepherd from there over to the east coast of Canada, um, which a lot of controversy occurred at this moment. And uh, it was in regards to the the mass slaughter of 300,000 um, seal, harp seals. And being a Canadian, I felt this was a, a great painting to put out and uh, to expose it as, as a Canadian and as, as someone who's against it. Um, I am from the East Coast, I'm from Cape Britain, and uh, just because I'm from the East Coast doesn't necessarily mean I have to uh, support this fashion. So I ended up painting, painting that one as well. And what I, uh, I put uh, a seal on top of a splattered, blood splattered uh, Canadian leaf to expose the country of, uh, of concern. And uh, a lot has happened since then. Um, within that painting itself, it also spoke about how the Sea Shepherd were off the coast in the international waters trying to expose this uh, inhumane act to the world. And uh, then, of course, our Coast Guard ram them, arrested them, towed the, the Farley Moat into Cape Breton per se, where I am from, actually 10 minutes from where this boat is uh, currently sitting. So from there, uh, it was all about uh, just seeing more horrific videos and uh, articles, and because I have a connection with uh, worldwide compassionate people, I get this news from everywhere. and. I do not take it to the point that uh, it destroys me. Uh, there's a lot of people that I'm aware of that uh, come into this movement and they, um, they, it is, it's hard to, I wouldn't say be uh, desensitized by it, but uh, because a lot of people, they're so passionate about it that they take it in so much that it just wrecks them and they're, they're out of commission for a while before they can get back into it. Um, for some reason, I'm different. Uh, I take it and I use it. I take that energy and that's when I pick up the brush and I decide to paint and I, and I meditate in a sense as I paint. That's my meditation. That's my relaxation time. And I do my best to put out uh, the information that we really, really need to put out. And, it, and I believe a lot of people like visuals. So to be put into a painting um, I can hit uh, a large amount of people that would not even normally even come close to any demonstrations, protests, um, to even listen to programs like this. So I find it to be a good tool in that fashion to uh, help educate. And children love pictures. Um, I have an eight-year-old daughter, which uh, if I can quickly say a, a happy birthday to her. She just turned eight years old yesterday. She's been involved in a lot of activism here in Toronto as well. And uh, she, she, uh, she's a good critic of mine, you know. <laughs> um, but I've only been painting since uh, uh, approximately 2004. Uh, a lady I met in uh, Newmarket just said, you know, she saw my art and said, here, here's a canvas, here's my brushes, paint. And uh, from then on, uh, it's just evolved uh, amazingly. And, and like I said, it wasn't until the shark water that it evolved even further. And to go back to your question, which I, I know it was a long, drawn-out answer, I still never got to the point that uh, uh, Arc 2 ended up grabbing on to me because I wanted to find a way to uh, come out publicly. I didn't know. I didn't know how, how I can go about setting up demos or protests. And, and I felt like my message needed to go further than the paintings. And that's when I became part of the Animal Issues uh, publicly. And uh, ARC2, Animal Rights Collective here in Toronto, which is an amazing organization, uh, brought me on uh, under their wing and supported all my radical views and thoughts. And, uh, you know, I tell you, they didn't uh, turn down almost anything, really, that I brought to the table. They were so willing, and uh, I love those guys. Like, they, you know, I'm there to support them for the rest of my life. Um, but then it continued on and uh, I met all the other organizations and that's when I came on the scene. Um, and that's when everybody's like, okay, uh, you know, 
Well, I heard this months later that, you know, a lot of people had some iffies about me, which, you know, it's flattering, you know, because I did have a lot of energy, and I still do have a lot of energy, and, uh, you know, as long as there's still issues with animals, it's going to keep pumping my blood filled with this energy to uh, expose the issues.